Mainza and Mainza Limited today announced the launch or the future launch of driverless tractors. Now, speaking about the technology, it isn't the first time in the world that that's happening, but it's the first for India. A market like India, we have with us the managing director of Mainza and Mainza Limited, Dr. Pavan Goenka. Sir, in a market like India, the first question that comes into mind is cost. Now, with the new technology that's coming in, we would assume that costs would be higher. How are you as a company, as a tractor manufacturer, looking at keeping costs down so as to make it affordable for the farmers of India? Before I answer your question, I believe that you are about to launch your channel. Uh, so uh, congratulations for getting there and all the best uh, uh, wishes for a successful uh, launch and continuing with that uh, for many, many years. Um, undoubtedly, cost is important. It's important in any market. Uh, it's, it's not just India. Um, but, but technology also brings value with it. Uh, and when the customer is looking at a new technology adaptation, they'll always do a cost-benefit analysis and, and, and then decide to buy. Uh, we believe that the driverless tractor brings tremendous value, uh, whether uh, uh, owner is using the tractor himself or whether owner is hiring a driver, in both cases, uh, brings tremendous value. Uh, and our job is to ensure that the value is more than the cost. And if you're able to do that, then I think they'll be pulled for the technology, whether it's India or any part, any, any, any other place in the world. Of course, the, the number of uh, farmers who will be willing to pay the delta uh, price for uh, driverless technology will be limited to begin with. But as the technology becomes more prevalent, the cost comes down even more and more. We would see a wider penetration of this technology in, in India. What would be the delta so, uh, to begin with, and what sort of a market share do you uh, see the driverless tractor segment garnering over, the, say, the next five years? Yeah, uh, see, uh, the first launch that we're doing is a hands-free uh, driver. Right. And that means a driver in the tractor but not, not having to operate the tractor. And uh, we are targeting, and this is just a target, uh, that if we can launch it uh, below a lakh, uh, then that will be a good price uh, right. to launch it at. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, frankly, uh, to get to that point because technology initially, when you bring in technology, costs money. Uh, and, and we are currently focusing on how to bring the cost down to a level where we can launch it for a lakh. Uh, my, uh, my take would be, and it's uh, uh, really too premature in a sense to talk about penetration when we have not even sold one. Uh, but my, uh, I would say that if we can get 5 to 7 percent penetration in five years' time, that will be a good penetration for a new technology like this. And uh, once we reach that sort of uh, um, economy of scale, and then perhaps it can take off uh, faster. Just like uh, it's electric vehicle technology where initial ramp up is very slow, and now we are at a threshold where it could ramp up very fast depending on how quickly the cost of battery comes down. Right, sir. Speaking about the second problem that comes into mind when it comes to this is farmers in India, not all of them are very educated. Uh, so to use probably a tab or a, or a smartphone to uh, control a tractor that he's not physically controlling might A, be scary for them, and two, be somewhat technologically challenging. How is Mahindra as a company looking at bridging that gap so as to maybe educate the farmers uh, a little more to use these tractors? Because this is a new technology for them. Let me, let me first say that uh, many of us uh, underestimate the techn technological savviness of our farmers. Uh, and what we have found is that any new thing that we are putting in the farm like DigiSense, for example, is a, is, a, is a product that we launched recently, Connected Car, right. uh, which in fact requires more technological savviness than what driverless tractor would require. And we find no problem with it uh, because uh, not only the young farmers, but even older farmers are able to pick up the technology fairly rapidly. Uh, having said that, yes, it will require training. And uh, clearly, we are going to ensure that all farmers who buy driverless tractor are fully trained by our dealers, yeah. who in, 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 in turn will be trained by us uh, to be able to train the driver uh, owners. Uh, that we will do. But I don't think that complexity of technology will drive people away. Complexity, you say, won't drive people away. So within the tractor space, driverless is a way to go, yes. But there's another aspect within the tractor space which has somehow not been tapped by any player. There are imports of cabin tractors in India, but cabin tractors a more safe option is somehow not prevalent in India, while going to driverless is one way to look about it. Isn't safety also a concern? Are you as a company also looking to uh, get in cabin tractors into the country? So cabin tractors is something that we export. In fact, we make cabin tractors in India and we export to USA. More right. than half of our export to US is cabin tractors. Uh, we have bought a company in Turkey, Hisarlar, right. uh, that is a big manufacturer of cabins. Uh, and uh, uh, just like driverless tractor is going to slowly become, uh, become uh, get a penetration, with, we kind of thought that by now India would be would see higher penetration of cabin tractor than it has. Okay, uh, we are ready for it. 
any time when there is a demand pull that comes for cabin tractors, uh, we will be ready to uh, offer cabin tractors in almost any of our platforms. Uh, we have cabin tractors in one of the new platforms that we have launched, which is officially available, but very few takers. Uh, unfortunately, right now, the cost of cabin tractor is very high. Right. Uh, and cabin tractor is not like a driverless tractor where with time the cost will come down because it is not the technology cost. It is the cost of material that goes into a cabin tractor. And these uh, material are very well evolved. So I don't see a significant cost reduction possible in, in, in cabin tractors. So it costs today two lakh to two and a half lakh to have a good cabin tractor. Uh, not, when, not enough takers. Not enough takers. Uh, as you said, uh, when you acquired stake in SRLR, you had said in uh, the conference call right after that, that cabin tractors would come into India, but you're saying that uh, yet you, uh, you don't see any demand. Will we see any demand, say, over the next five years, going by the growth projections that the tractor industry is seeing, the farm seg segment is seeing? Can we expect demand over the next five years? Because this is a safety concern. Uh, agreed with a uh, driverless tractor, the driver will be at lesser risk here, but that not everybody will buy it. You said there are only 5 to 7 percent people who are expected to buy this. Do we see the tractor segment moving a little more towards safety over the next five years? Okay. So uh, the cabin tractor <coughs> and, and, and safety are two different aspects. Okay? Cabin tractor is more for comfort, uh, right. air conditioning, uh, not having dust come in, water come in, right. uh, not having heat uh, sort of load come in. So that's more for comfort. One part of cabin tractor is safety, which is ROPS, R-O-P-S, uh, which can happen even without cabin tractor. Okay? Right. So Government of India is coming out of the regulation <clears throat> that probably will be implemented in 2019, uh, which will require all tractors in, sold in India to meet the safety requirement of uh, rollover protection. That's what ROPS stands for. Uh, and today, the, the biggest safety concern tractor is when the tractor rolls over then the, 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 it, it certainly causes very severe injury to the, to the driver. And with ROP, ROPs, that will go away. So that is happening independent of uh, uh, cabin tractor, and that will be uh, required by law. And therefore, every tractor will have to have that. Right. And that has a cost implication, uh, but nowhere near what cabin tractor cost. So speaking about the requirements of law, then law also, if not in essence, requires the Indian automotive industry to move to electrification. Ministers, top ministers from the government have said this time and again that companies might even be bulldozed. Now, recently, just yesterday, as a matter of fact, you tied up with Ford to foray into a lot of areas to jointly develop uh, technology in a lot of areas. Electrification was one of them. Now, I understand you, were, uh, you will not give me details of the matter, but it's a, it's a larger question that I have in mind. Mahindra and Mahindra, Ford India, the Ford Motor Company, actually, for, for that matter. Many other companies, giants, in, you're all giants in your space. You've all gone your own way all these years when it comes to technology, R&D in those spaces. Why is it now that all these big companies are actually forming alliances, especially for electric vehicles? What is it that scares a company to go at it alone? Uh, we saw the Suzuki to Toyota Alliance. We saw the Tata, Volkswagen, Skoda Alliance, which did not uh, go through. Now we're seeing uh, Ford and M&M come together. What is it that makes you come together, at least join hands with somebody? Is the risk too high? What, what, what is the point behind that? A well, good question, but you already answered that. Today I have my tractor hat on, and I will not answer any automotive questions. Right, sir. I guess then we'll have to keep it at that. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you.